Mr. Facilitator, the Honorable Donville Innes, Minister of Industry, International Business Commerce, and Small Business Development, Senator John Watson, Mr. Dean Strickel, President, and the Board of Directors, Small Business Association, Ms. Lynette Holder, CEO, Small Business Association, Mrs. Carol Marie, CEO, First Citizens Bank, Mr. Sandiford, VP Risk Management, Sajak War, members of the Leacock family, specially invited guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to recognize the presence of my sister, Mia Motley, leader of the opposition. Thank you for those kind introductory remarks. Thanks also to Mrs. Holder and her team for the warm hospitality my team and I received since we got here. I welcome the opportunity to deliver the eighth Sajikor lecture in the Leo Leacock Memorial Lecture Series honoring an outstanding Barbadian business leader. It is also my pleasure to share with this very special gathering of business leaders and entrepreneurs within the MSME fraternity of a sister Caribbean island. I have chosen to speak on the topic Caribbean MSMEs overcoming the challenges achieving the vision. Ladies and gentlemen, before I begin my presentation, kindly permit me to make a few remarks concerning what has transpired in our region over the past few weeks. In recent weeks, our region has been devastated by several natural disasters. I must therefore express heartfelt sympathies to our brothers and sisters across the region whose lives have been shattered, properties destroyed, and who are facing an uncertain future as a result of these disasters. My condolences to the, those family who have lost their loved ones. Whatever anyone else wants to say or think, climate change is real. This is especially so for those of us who occupy small, vulnerable island states, will continue to be confronted by the effects of climate change with more of these intense and deadly disasters. Let us not wait for another Irma or Maria to begin to do what we know has to be done. I hope they will never name one a Porsche. <laughs> because I love, not hate, I comfort and support, not hurt. The Caribbean region must come together now fully understanding that in any given year, at least one territory in the region is likely to be severely impacted by one disaster or another. For sure, it does not help in taking comfort or breathing a sigh of relief that it was them and not us. It is all of us. Brothers and sisters, we are one Caribbean people, one region, facing a common environmental threat. And we must be fully prepared to confront this threat of climate change together. We must invest, even from the little we have, in building capacity and resources to deal with these eventualities. For one thing is sure, and it is that there's no escaping the threat of hurricanes in the Caribbean. It is therefore time for the region to adopt appropriate building codes which can withstand these disasters. The governments of the region must commit to and seriously support the regional disaster fund. 
I further suggest that it may well be time to engage the support of international companies who do business in the region, such as the airlines and cruise companies, to contribute to such a fund. Island economies are not resource-rich nations, and one hurricane can wreak havoc, many havoc, many times our GDP, leading to decades of rebuilding and reconstruction. Let me commend those countries in the region that have already provided assistance to those affected. I encourage others to come on board, because in times of disasters, every little adds up. And remember, as we say in Jamaica, today for me, tomorrow for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I commend the Small Business Association of Barbados on its 14th Annual Small Business Week of Activities, which emphasize the contribution of the micro, small, and medium enterprise sector to economic and social development. Any discussion about the MSME sector, however, is more than a discussion on individual small business operations, but must be viewed within the context of the Caribbean economic sustainability. Over the last few decades, we have learned, and I hope I have come to accept, that economic growth is fueled more rapidly through both the formal and informal MSME sector. Every economy, whether emerging, those of developed countries, or those no longer referred to as third world, has come to acknowledge the important contribution of a dynamic small business sector. I regard the MSME sector as indispensable to the sustainable growth of our economies and for the development of our peoples. In Jamaica, studies have shown that major segment of the labor force is engaged by MSMEs. At the same time, this sector is expanding in different areas of the economy, for example, in tourism, information and communication technology, the creative and cultural industries, art and craft, and the culinary industry, just to name a few. Data from the Planning Institute of Jamaica indicate that MSMEs provide more employment for every dollar invested. This may very well be also true for you here in Barbados. Every policy measure must therefore be explored and implemented to promote the growth and development of the MSME sector. As a former chair of the CARICOM Prime Ministerial Committee of External Trade, I have been acutely aware of some of the challenges faced by this important sector. One of the major challenges is financing. There are several ways to look at this challenge. Some Caribbean people have a risk-averse culture. We are simply afraid of taking risk, especially when it comes to our own money. We are wary of venturing into the unknown. And we certainly do not like to fail. The policy of traditional lending and the attitude of some financial institutions towards the small business entrepreneur has also impacted the ability of the sector to perform. This is where governments and the financial institutions of the Caribbean must work together to develop strategies, to create policies, and to craft programs aimed at providing access to the thousands of citizens of our countries who are bursting with ideas but lack the requisite financial resources. The availability of financial support will not only provide access to well-needed capital for business startups, but it will embolden existing entrepreneurs to take greater risk. I certainly know how challenging it can be for countries 
like ours, with limited resources to prioritize their finances to address the pressing issues of education, health, infrastructure, national security, housing, and water. However, as important as these human development goals are, we must acknowledge that if we do not foster and nurture economic growth through every available avenue, we will forever be challenged in meeting the expanding needs of our peoples. Governments must therefore be bold and innovative in their effort to support MSMEs. They must develop policies and enact legislation to secure the growth of this sector while protecting the citizens and the financial institutions. There's no greater risk to Caribbean economic sustainability than national governments not providing the necessary resources so that our people can achieve economic advancement through sustainable growth. I believe that governments in the region must resist the temptation to be penny wise and pound foolish. Because while taxation may provide governments with short term revenue, where this is burdensome and becomes or acts as a distinctive, our disincentive, distinctive disincentive, it may have the opposite effect of stag stagnating business development. It is time to change the conversation. It is time to defy conventional wisdom and stereotypical descriptions of our small business sector. It is time Caribbean MSMEs overcome the challenges and achieve their vision. One of the most effective ways in changing the conversation is to draw inspiration from others. Perhaps there is no other sector as endowed with stories of grit, patience, determination, and self-confidence than the small business sector. Let me share a few. Howard Schultz thought he had a great business idea. In his autobiography, Pour Your Heart in It, Schultz related how he needed a million dollars to get his business idea off the ground. He approached 242 people for money and was flatly turned down by 200 and 17 of them. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a rejection rate of over 90%. Some thought he was crazy, that his business idea would never work, that he was wasting his time and should just go get a job. That idea is the business we know today as Starbucks, with more than 10,000 outlets across the globe and one of the five most admired companies in America, according to Fortune magazine survey. Ladies and gentlemen, we in the Caribbean also have our stories to tell. Jamaica and Caribbean entrepreneur and hotel mogul Gordon Boot Stewart, an international household name in tourism and hospitality industry, started business as a door-to-door -door salesman who, having no experience in the tourism industry, acquired a rundown property in Montego Bay and turned his vision into the Caribbean all-inclusive resort chain Sandals International. This discussion on MSMEs and the stories of grit and determination would be incomplete without reference to women-owned MSME businesses. I share one such story. In 1992, a Jamaican woman, Joan Duncan, started Jamaica Money Market Brokers Limited with a vision of providing money market opportunities to ordinary Jamaicans. The reach of that enterprise today extends to countries across the region, and her story is not unique. Here in Barbados, over a third of business owners are females. I have no doubt 
that many of you in this room, as MSME business leaders and entrepreneurs, can share your story of struggle, rejection, perseverance, and eventual success. There's one clear lesson in all of this. There's no easy road to success. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world which is constantly changing. Some changes of note include the rapid levels of increase in automation, artificial intelligence, human-less factories, and driverless transportation. It is estimated that by 2050, close to half of the work now being done by humans will be automated. With an already weak manufacturing base and capacity, Caribbean economies could be further impacted by these changes. Another change taking place is the movement overseas of manufacturing operations to low-wage economies. There's also the concern of the increasing consumption of foreign produced goods by Caribbean nationals, some of whom refuse to buy the goods produced by their local MSME businesses. A fallacy of our culture is that if it comes from abroad, it is better. Not true. What comes from what we are sure of and what we are consuming must be better than things coming from elsewhere that we are not sure of. If it is foreign made, there is a perception of a higher standard of living and social mobility. This is a feature of Caribbean underdevelopment which we have nurtured undoubtedly influenced by our colonial past. To challenge this perception, MSMEs must produce goods and services of a higher quality, competitively priced, thus providing Caribbean consumers with best value for money. The Caribbean has had a long history of partnership with the MSME sector. Over the years, small businesses around the region have benefited from various sector enhancing initiatives. As early as in the 1980s, concerted efforts were made by governments, regional and international organizations to support small business development. CARICOM heads went as far as to declare 1988 the year of small business. A number of programs to include grants, concessionary loans, incentive schemes, training and technical assistance programs were provided. Institutions such as the United States Agency for International Development, Canadian International Development Agency, German Foundation for International Development, the Pan American Development Foundation, Foundation for International Training, Caribbean Development Bank, and individual governments have all been part of this effort. It may well be useful to research, exercise, to undertake 30 years later to determine what impact has flowed from these interventions. How many of these small business recipients have been able to thrive and have even moved from being small businesses to medium and even large enterprises. Ladies and gentlemen, there are several structural and inherent weaknesses confronting the MSME sector, which they must overcome if meaningful change is to take place. Take, for example, the absence of a standard, universally acceptable definition, definition of the sector. Presently, Jamaica has one definition. The United States and the European Union have theirs. The definition also varies among development institutions themselves which seek to channel assistance to the sector. Essentially, they are t um, talking about the same thing that is a business generating a certain level of revenue and employment. However, if we were to rely and the definitions of certain countries, some large businesses in our region could well be classified as MSMEs. Perhaps the time has come for Caribbean MSMEs to lead the charge by having an agreed definition for the sector. 
there is clearly a need for consensus in the definition of the MSMEs. Besides the definition issue, the sector is also characterized as having low levels of technical, managerial, and <coughs> sorry, entrepreneurial know-how, lack of access to capital, and lack of economies of scale. The MSME sector must resist any attempt to carry these labels as they are not issues which are exclusive just to that sector. The sector must also defy the perception that it is inherently lacking in management and marketing savvy, broad operational capacity, business leadership, communication and technical skills, familiarity with business support services, training, innovation capacity, utilization of technology, access to financing and customer base. MSMEs must not embrace these as features exclusive to them, as these are part of the challenge of doing business, particularly in emerging economies and small island states. The sector cannot be defined by these characteristics. How would one then explain the immense contribution that the sector is making in countries all over the world? The importance of the MSME sector needs no convincing arguments. It is a known and established fact. In the United States, small business, businesses produce 46% of the private non-farm GDP. In Canada, MSMEs con constitute 85% of the number of enterprises and contribute up to 70% of GDP. In Jamaica, 90% of employment is in the MSME sector. A 2016 regional MSME study towards a new frontier conducted by the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, found that Caribbean MSMEs account for over 50% of private enterprises and contributed more than 50% of regional GDP. All this speaks to the fact that the MSME sector across the world is a significant contributor to income generation, employment, and poverty reduction. In turning my attention to the road ahead and the future survival of Caribbean MSMEs, it is clear that the sector must leverage its vast potential and promise for the greater benefit of Caribbean economy and society. This process will require concerted action on the part of regional governments and a united Caribbean MSME. The time has come for regional governments to implement special and differential treatment, a kind of affirmative action, affirmative action plan, if you will, for the sector to further build its productive ca capacity. I know in this area of free trade and open markets, there are those who would argue that special and differential treatment is outdated. I submit that it is not so. It was preferential treatment which allowed sugar and banana to be two dominant export industries in the Caribbean for centuries. The removal of these special treatments under the guise of free trade and leveling the economic playing field contributed to the collapse of these industries all over the Caribbean. Ladies and gentlemen, for much of the past 25 years, Caribbean economies joined in this level playing field argument almost as if to dismiss the reality that the world is not level, nor is it comprised of equal players. The reality is that there is a combination of weaker and disadvantaged and stronger dominant economies. There was never, nor will there ever be, a level playing field. Ladies and gentlemen, those who are marginalized and operate at the fringes, those in the periphery, whether in the personal, economic, or political sphere, will never be able to advance from that state without some degree of special 
and preferential treatment. Caribbean governments should therefore not shy away from providing special and differential treatment to sectors deemed important for the growth and development of societies. Clearly, the regional MSME sector is deserving of such consideration. A good starting point could be that special consideration is given to MSMEs in the area of the procurement of goods and services for the public sector. The fact is that without special and differential treatment, MSMEs would not be able to compete with big businesses. Jamaica embarked on such an initiative through the passage of the Public Procurement Act 2015 with provision for special and differential treatment to MSMEs players. A special and differential treatment of MSMEs in government procurement policy will serve to create employment, facilitate growth with equity, save foreign exchange, and maintain social stability. However, while receiving this special treatment, the MSMEs must satisfy the principles governing public sector procurement. MSMEs and big businesses may be on the same playing field and even playing the same game, but the reality is they do not enjoy the same advantages. I believe this is a strategy the region as a whole ought to consider for the benefit of the sector. Ladies and gentlemen, as fast as I can run, I would never recommend anyone putting Usain Bolt and me in the same race. I encourage regional MSMEs to lobby Caribbean governments to consider similar special and differential treatment to facilitate their MSME sector as catalysts for human, social, and economic development, MSMEs are key drivers of economic growth, job creation, and enablers of social stability. To this end, the establishment of a Caribbean association of MSMEs with a robust advocacy role is an absolute necessity. Ladies and gentlemen, this would go a far way in helping to create a positive change in both the perception and attitude towards MSMEs. A body such as this, comprising registered, licensed, and certified MSME producers and service providers from across the region would be a new assurance of MSME quality and efficiency. Such an association would be a powerful force for regional growth and certainly development. Having such a united regional mechanism would also provide greater leverage for Caribbean MSMEs to take advantage of international trade opportunities. In the final analysis, while regional governments have given some support to the sector, there's now an urgent need for MSMEs to articulate a determined and holistic way forward. Our best prospect for addressing these challenges lie with the all-important MSC, MSME sector. The strategic policy shifts, shifts and a united Caribbean MSME can make a difference. Within this context, a Caribbean MSME policy is an absolute necessity as a comprehensive framework for the implementation of strategies to support the growth and development of the MSME sector. Rather than competing among ourselves, let us in the spirit of togetherness create a business platform, a wider canvas on which all can operate successfully. Our domestic market is not Barbados or Jamaica, but the Caribbean. Mr. President, there's no doubt we are in a changing world, and we cannot be bystanders, bystanders of the change. Yes, you may be small entrepreneurs today, but that should not define your future. That is a larger vision 
there is a much larger vision, a bigger dream that must be pursued. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, MSMEs in the Caribbean are at a stage where new approaches and different strategies must be pursued if this important sector is to realize its potential for Caribbean economic sustainability. New financing op um, options, particularly in the area of equity and venture capital, also exists for MSMEs going to the public. The experience in Jamaica of a junior stock exchange for MSMEs has been a bold and positive initiative. Established a mere eight years ago, specifically for MSMEs, to raise equity and trade publicly, there's presently 32 companies on the junior stock exchange. All have had their financial future and their business operations significantly strengthened through public participation and shareholding. I believe that a Caribbean junior market for regional MSMEs could be an important step forward. Achieving the changes we desire will also demand a broadening in the culture of entrepreneurship among Caribbean nationals and the introduction of this dis discipline as part of our school curriculum, curriculum from as early as the secondary level. And I think it would be very good for us to start at the secondary level. Our people must be imbued with this culture from an early age. It should not be that one simply stumbles into business and hope for the best. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a clear path before us and a clear choice that we must make. We can either choose to do business as usual or to make the paradigm shift. I therefore want to challenge you to take the necessary action, not only for the survival of your individual businesses, but more importantly, to move the Caribbean MSMEs forward in order to overcome the challenges. The founding fathers of our region, Grandley Adams, Eric Williams, Forbes Burnham, and Norman Washington Manley, envisioned a strong, united Caribbean. We must never allow that vision for the region to die. As a people, we have too much to lose. The dream of one Caribbean, united and determined, has perhaps never been more urgent. Mr. President, business leaders and members of the Barbados Small Business Association, in wishing you every success in the activities of this important week, it is also my hope that the choice we make will not only lead to a more dynamic MSME sector in the region, but to us overcoming the challenges being faced so that we can achieve Caribbean economic sustainability. May God continue to guide and protect the people of the Caribbean, and may he also bless us with success. I thank you.